Rogers here. Um, this is part two of my shimming series, right? I did a lot of talking in part one, so I'm going to try to keep it short in this one so we can get straight to the action. I know you don't want to sit through a whole bunch of uh, blabbing, but I do have a couple things I want to talk about. So the first one is the, the products that I'm using. This is an Angel Custom CNC box, um, and I'm not really a big fan of it to be honest but it's what I have laying around um, the bearings were pre fit into the case um, which isn't too bad I guess um, I prefer to have them loose so that they can find center on their own but uh, anyway um, you'll see the inside of it when uh, when we get into the shimming process so I'm not going to talk too much about the internals you know without being able to show you uh, I'll kind of comment on it it as we go through. Um, the next thing is I'm using a set of SHS 32 to 1 gears that I had laying around. Um, they're super, super big torque. Um, this this sector gear here, if you notice the uh, the part that the teeth that engage the spur gear on it come out as far as the teeth that engage the piston. Um, so it'll make for some interesting clearancing things that we'll have to, uh, I'll have to point out later on in the video. But, uh, anyway, it's, that's the gear set I'll be using. Uh, shims, you know, honestly, I, I like to use kind of whatever you have laying around. I mean, hell, I've shimmed a box with shims I took out of a stock GNP set once. I mean, you know, so what? Doesn't matter. Um, see, like, this is a mixture of probably, I don't know, Matrix, uh, blah, blah, blah company, you know, the, the, I don't know if they're, those are copper, I think they're copper, but those are GNP, of course. Um, and, uh, let's see, I don't really mind reusing shims, I mean, just as long as you clean them off, right, you know, if you get a whole bunch of gunk on them, then you don't want that to give you false readings, uh, with your, your equipment, like this guy over here, right? Um, so, let's see, the tooling, right? So, if you haven't watched my tooling video, that's cool, you might want to check it out. Like, you know, there are a few things that I like, uh, that I mentioned in there that kind of helped me simplify my process. But, one of the things I mentioned is having a spare case, right? This, this is a really, really poorly made nothing case right you know it's nothing special it's uh but what's nice about it is once you get your stuff shimmed right you can just throw them in there and throw your throw the case around doesn't matter you can't lose it right so you don't bump off the table and boom uh lose all the work you put into it uh the next thing and i usually hold them here on the magnet right it may be kind of hard to see uh but a spare bolt set, right? Um, that's I like to use Phillips when I'm tuning because you know it's a lot faster than say running through it with these Allen keys. You know that's that's kind of a pain. Um, so just things to consider. Um, I use Allen keys on the final products usually, but I mean I don't know why. I mean I, I don't know that it makes any difference. These boxes aren't tied together real hard anyway. Um, but yeah, if you have an extra magnet hanging around, it's kind of nice, you know, put it right down here in front of you so that you can, uh, you can access them real quickly, you know, and, uh, and all that. Makes the process easier. Um, so the next thing I was going to talk about, and this is kind of getting into, uh, setting things up and having them kind of ready for what you want to do in the process. Uh, so... If your box does not already have a uh, a hole down here, right? This is right in front of the grip, right? This, oh, well, the bevel, where is it? There you go. See, so the bevel is sitting in there like that, right? If you don't already have a window there, I really suggest you take in, um, say, one of these carbide burrs that I showed in my tooling video uh, and just hog into it right make a window make it real big you're not gonna hurt anything right you know I mean you need to do it with just the case and then wash it out you know make sure that you get all the 
uh, all the metal shavings out and everything. And I, I use soap and hot water, right? And then you can use compressed air cans, like you know, a duster for a computer keyboard, uh, to to dry it off if you like. You know, um, I'd suggest getting the water off it soon so that you don't have some random by chance corrosion or you know, so that the water doesn't attract dirt into the case that you just cleaned. That kind of thing. Um, let's see. Oh yeah, and then up here, right? This this hole is get a pointer here, right? So that hole is not there originally, right? This is a stock GNP case, but I cut it. So, oh, that's too far away. You're not gonna be able to see. Um, I cut it so that I could access the uh, the bevel in here, right? And that's something that just irritates me, like nobody's business. I don't know if you can see the the play in the bearing, but you know it. That's something I'll talk about later on with the bearing holes and everything. That probably won't happen on this, so I may not end up talking about it. But anyway, so that hole is important for when, you know, for the setup of the tuning process so that, uh, right, so that you can view where your, your pinion is actually showing up, right? And these two in, in conjunction with each other. Um, it's nice to have the one on top if you don't use it to look in. It will allow light from a flashlight to light up the inside of the chamber. I got the trigger right in the way, didn't I? Uh, to light up the inside of the, the chamber in there so that you can um, um, see what you're doing here, right? So you can get the proper motor placement. Um, so another thing that I like to do, and I'm not sure the camera is going to pick it up. Oh, it does, it does. Okay, so right in this area, you can see little sketch lines that are shining. Um, so, I wonder if I can get, no I can't, okay. So, those sketch lines are coming off of the pinion hole, right? And then what I did was I looked in there, right, and found where the edge of the, of the bevel was. And then you can take, I find files actually work really great as scribes, right? And then, I mean, do this as cleanly as possible, but, you know, right, take the tip of the file and, and uh, scratch out where the edge of the bevel is. Or you can off-center the, the hole that you drill, one of the two, it doesn't really matter. Uh, in this case, I put it right on top of the pinion, so you know, I had described the line so I would know how far deep to put the back of the pinion in, right, you know, because that would tell me where the bevel gear was. Um, so the last thing is, you know, your grip fitment. Um, that's a pretty key part of the process because you can get a really clean shim job, you can get a shim job that's I mean, right where it's supposed to be, but then when you put a motor grip on and you run it, it's screaming at you, it's hollering at you, and you're not going to be able to figure out why, what's going on, I thought I got it right. So what happens at times is right here, you can have the grip not want to clearance over the bearings, right? Um, and then when you have... When you're talking in terms of, say, dealing with a body, you need to make sure that it's not touching coming around here, right? So there's actually supposed to be right, just a little bit of movement there. You don't want a lot, uh, but when you put the pins in and, and it's bolted in back here and all those things, it'll kill the movement. But... Um, sitting like this there should be a little bit or otherwise what might end up happening is the top of the grip here will not allow the the grip to seat completely up into the gearbox um, and so you're not going to be able to get your specifications just right where they are and uh, sometimes it might be tilted like <laughs> One reason why I don't like this case, and you can't 
see it with this particular grip, but a whole nother M4 grip, right? Same idea. And it was cocked back, bolted on like this, right? So I'm not sure if that's the grip manufacturer or if that was the Angel Custom Box, but this one is tilted just slightly. It's hard to see, uh, but it is in fact tilted. So um, that's another thing to consider, you know, um, is where the motor is going to end up placed. Okay. Um, well, I guess we'll we'll go ahead and move on to the next part of the video. Um, if you're curious about how to go about getting your your grip fitment and everything, especially with the body, uh, Meki, I believe you pronounce it, M A E K I I I. Uh, he has some some good videos on uh, how to file it, and I mean, I, I like his method. It's uh, you know, that's a great way for showing it. Um, anyway, so next part of the video. Okay, guys. So we're set up here on the bevel gear, right? And the goal is to find out one key thing in particular, right? How much... There are no shims in the case, right? You don't put any shims on top or bottom of the bevel gear when you're doing this. Install your motor grip and your motor, right? get your proper pinion depth right so there are videos on this I'm not going to talk too much about it but get your pinion right get it set up right about there to where the back of the pinion is meshed up with the outer edge of the bevel gear okay now what you're gonna do is or what we're looking for rather is how much do we need to lift the bevel gear up into the motor, right? Because there's all that room because there are no shims. So we're finding out, mm, I need to lift it, oh, say about that much, right? Okay. So here's how it works, right? You're going to come back under here with a screwdriver or something, you know, whatever will grab the axle of the gear. And then you're going to pick, pick it up, right? See, the, the max play says somewhere around 19 and you can check it by putting your pick into the window that you've made in your gearbox uh, and push the gear up in there and then feel it right is it touching is it you know uh, move the pick right try to spin the gear it should walk just a little bit so I'm gonna back it off a few thousands this is hard to do so loose. So I'm trying to find that little spot, that sweet spot, where you have just a little bit of walk. I mean, it's going to be just enough to allow the gear to click back and forth right there I like so that was about 17 thousandths up right now you want to give it just a little bit of walk spinning right uh, so that it can spin back and forth into your pinion right um, and what you're doing here is you're getting the proper meshing let me zoom out here so I can kind of show you right so think of it kind of this way, right? Where you have, you don't want your gear teeth, uh, you don't want them to be too far disengaged because they're going to slap around and make noise. But you don't want them too tight because then they're going to grind and make noise, right? And neither of those is good. So you want it to have just that little bit of t t t t t t t t t t right? That little bit of walk, that little bit of spin in the gear that lets you know they're close right that you know they're they're right on each other but it's not you know it's not um it's not too loose and not too tight right you're gonna have to experiment with this a little bit but uh that's kind of the basic idea for 
the back side shims of the bevel gear. Okay guys, now what we're doing here is total bevel gear play, right? Um, leave the box bolted into the vise, just look down the, the pistol grip and uninstall it, right? It's important that you get the motor out of the way because now we need to find out how far uh, is it from one side of the case to the other in terms of the bevel gear, right? So you should get a much larger measurement here. Um, in this case, I get, look at that, see, 50 thousandths, right? 50 good old thousandths of an inch. Yep. Easy as that, guys. This part of it's so easy. Um, so, now you know that you need on the, uh, on the back side of the gear, you needed what 16, 17 thousandths, right? On this side of the gear, you need a whole. Now it said 50 thousandths, but here's the trick: you have to remember there's a specification, right? How tight do you want this? So what you're gonna do is always get these dead on, right? So I decided say 17 thousandths, right? That seemed that seemed happy to me, and you know what? Maybe I'll stick with 15, uh, a 16 or a loose 15, just to make sure I don't get it too tight and noisy, right? Um, leave that. Don't take away from it. Okay. So come up here to the the nose, where you know, who cares how deep it is? You're just going to match the spur to it anyway, right? So we got 50 thousandths. I want to do, let's say, three thousandths on this so of a clearance right so it should have three thousandths play that's about um, a tenth of a millimeter right so you got um, seven well fifteen here right that's what I wanted to go with leave it a little loose and then on here forty seven thousandths right it measured the full right 50 here on the dial right it measured 50 all, all the way out here but you're gonna take away some in shims you know in shim sizing so that it still has room to play right the gear is not locked in place because if you if you shim it to where it can't move back and forth then you're gonna lock up a bearing right okay all right so that's the bevel gear next we're gonna move into the spur gear